On today's episode of Watch JR Go, we are talking about TPMS and why it sucks. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go, and today we are here in my garage to take a few minutes to talk about TPMS, why it sucks, why it doesn't suck, why it's actually life-saving and it's probably saved my life as well. And how it works, a little bit of history too. So TPMS, or the Tire Pressure Monitoring System, has been around for a long time. For me, the first time I ever saw it in action was probably on the C5 Corvette back in like 98, 99. Uh, that was the coolest thing ever because you could scroll through the driver information center and see the tire pressure on every tire in that thing. And it was really one of the most advanced ones and one of the earliest ones. After that, I kept seeing it on more and more cars. Everyone's seen it on more and more cars because after about 2006, it was federally mandated to be on every passenger car. It has to be on trucks, has to be on almost everything now. And even better now, it's on motorcycles. So what is TPMS? Well, TPMS is a little radio transmitter that's typically embedded on the valve stem. Uh, on these GM cars, it's actually a rubber valve stem with the sensor on the back of it right there. And on a lot of cars, it's a metal valve stem with a hex nut on it. So that little bitty thing, it's about two inches long, uh, sits in the wheel and that pressure transducer is in there with a radio that runs on 315 or 433 megahertz, the same frequencies as your keyless entry and uh, it transmits the tire pressure, typically the temperature, and sometimes uh, speed to the car. Now, depending on how the car is built, you could have a high line or a low line version. On more expensive cars, you probably have high line TPMS, which is where it'll probably have a TPMS radio beside every wheel, so four of them, and maybe even a fifth one for the spare tire, because a lot of cars have TPMS on the spare at this point. And the high line cars with individual radios can typically send the 125 kilohertz frequency, tone, or data, whatever it wants, to the TPMS sensor, and that will wake it up, and as soon as it sees that little wake up, it just shoots out its little data burst. It's like a little serial string with an identifier, pressure, temperature, and maybe battery status or acceleration. You can send quite a bit of data over the thing, but uh, that's how a high line system works. On a low line system, the car just kind of waits till it receives data from the car. So most cheaper cars use a low line system, and honestly, it's probably fine, because as soon as the car goes over about 25 mile an hour, it starts transmitting the pressure every 60 to 90 seconds. So no matter what, you're going to get uh, TPMS data out of the wheels and tires. Uh, they all sense movement, and they are required to transmit uh, periodically and the Highline cars can force a transmission. That's really the main difference there. And uh, it's a little bit more expensive to build the system. Now the manufacturers aren't required to tell you the tire pressure for each wheel, but cars that do do it are so much better. My Volt does it, the Kia does it, the Corvettes do it, and uh, a lot of older TPMS cars, they just have the light that says, hey, you've got low tire pressure. It makes it harder to diagnose. At least uh, if you have all the values on screen or on some sort of display, you can quickly see which tire is not sending a TPMS signal and fix that. Honestly, the whole system is pretty simple and very reliable. It's also very inexpensive sensors, maybe at the high end are about $35. Some of the Corvette ones back in the day were very expensive and some of the band types are expensive. But honestly, now that it's required on basically every car, sensors are a lot cheaper and you can get them anywhere. Now, the only reason TPMS sucks is from a maintenance perspective. It's honestly pretty inexpensive. It works very well. I'm very happy it's on every car. And you know, it's not really that hard to work on, but you gotta have a tire machine half the time. So, you know, most people don't have a tire machine in the garage. I don't either, and I like to work on my own stuff, and I know that I can always fix these TPMS issues, but tire shop's usually involved. So today, I'm gonna use the tire machine. We're gonna head on over to the Car Ninjas, and I'll show you how I work on TPMS, and a little bit of behind the scenes with the sensors and swapping that stuff out, doing relearns, all that good stuff. You can do quite a bit of this at home with uh, the Autel Maxi TPMS, so I'll show you that tool today as well, and it's relatively inexpensive. I did talk about TPMS saving my life. It was really when I was riding the Goldwing to get my iron butt uh, last year. The rear tire went flat on me and I knew way before the bike started feeling squirrely and the rear end like washing out on me a little bit that the tire was flat. I didn't believe it at first. The TPMS light came on and then started flashing and uh, it even has a special alert for when the tires are rapidly deflating. And there were like three punctures in that tire and uh, the bike immediately told me that it was flat and it even took over the gauges and showed me the pressure as it was dropping. So I knew immediately that I needed to pull over and when you're on a motorcycle, that's like the most important. So it's awesome that it has front and rear TPMS on I know the Goldwing, the Indians, all the new bikes. I'm really, really happy that it's implemented there and I think that will save a ton of lives. 
Not to mention the lives it saves in cars when people get, you know, front flats and stuff like that and don't know. So let's go break some beads, take a look at some sensors, get out the TPMS tool and see this in practice. We're gonna fix a couple today. And we are here at the Car Ninjas. He has a lift, makes life super easy for this stuff and the tire machine, of course. So we're gonna fire up Maxi TPMS right here. This is the TS-508. I'll throw a link in the description below. And uh, we're gonna put this in quick mode. I know it might be kind of hard to see that, but Chevrolet, Silverado, and this is a 2010. Silverado, and let's find 2010. That one right there, they're all 315 megahertz sensors. And now we'll just put it right beside the wheel. It needs to be within about four inches and hit scan sensor. Whenever you do this, you typically use an order that is uh, driver front and then passenger front and just keep going around the truck just like that. So we'll trigger these ones and that one is working. We got 32 PSI and 93 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, we got the truck up on the lift and I pulled the uh, spline lug nuts off. Eric's got some fancy lug nuts on this truck. And now we are ready to pop the wheel off. There we go, she's loose. So I'm gonna lift this up, run it over to the tire machine and uh, I'll show you guys as we get this thing locked down and break the bead. Like that, easy way, straight up cheating. Got the bead broke on the tire, only took a few seconds and I immediately found the problem. It only took about one rotation of this thing. Uh, yeah, I would say that's a problem right there. As you can see, the bottom of the sensor is just gone. Somebody like poorly mounted these or just didn't get it over the sensor. And that was the end of that. So we are going to try to take the brand new one here. That's the AC Delco rubber stem style. This is a 13598771. And uh, we're going to try to pop that one out and just pull this one in. Should be very easy because you can use the normal valve stem tool. So to get the old valve stem out, I, uh, the sensor was basically broke off. So I just pulled off what was left of it and then used the valve stem tool and pulled it through the top. Actually worked out pretty well. This, uh, you just screw it on the valve stem and pull, and it's got a lever, so it gives you some leverage there. And uh, protect the wheel, obviously. Put like a rag over it, that's what I did. And then, we're gonna have to get that all cleaned out in there. There's a whole lot of dirt, and we don't want it to leak around the valve stem. So uh, I'll take like another rag and some water, spray it down in there until we get that uh, all cleaned out, pulling the new one. Okay, new TPMS sensor is installed. As you guys can see, I set it the right direction, so hopefully the bead doesn't catch it on the way out. And I gotta find the old sensor that was already in here. All right, we got the tire back on the wheel and it's just kind of sitting here on the truck. I wanna verify before we actually uh, lock this thing down. So scan sensor and wherever it went, trigger. Hey, there we go. 35.8 PSI, that's exactly what we wanted. So that is good news. And we had to use the grabber tool because we didn't want to pull the whole tire off and reach in there and like slowly pull out all the pieces of the old sensor. We got the battery and the plastic and the cap. It's all out. And uh, now we can tighten this guy down and reprogram it to the truck. All right, we are back on the ground and it has two new TPMS sensors now. Eric had to run an errand to pick up one more because we found out two were failed. And now if we scan this thing, let's see if we get a return. That's more like it. And we'll check the other new sensor over here. Let's see if that's good. Oh, that one's fighting, isn't it? All right, we're gonna put this truck in TPM learn mode. And it looks like it's talking to it. Learn, procedure in progress, tire learning active, which is simple. And now all I should have to do is run around and trigger each tire with this bad boy here. All right, this is the last one. Let's hope it works. It's not triggering. Well, that last sensor Eric picked up today in town did not work. It has to be programmed by a tool that we don't have. Unfortunately, it's not quite the universal sensors that Johnny and I have for the Autels. So we're gonna win once today. This is the failed one for my Nissan Titan. Swap out these sensors. We'll have to break the bead to do that, but it shouldn't take too long. Much easier than the last job. That's about as close as it's gonna get. Break the bead at the sensor. Let it push in real quick. And 
And there's my sensor. Now we're ready to just pop the hex screw off, throw that in the trash. Got the hex nut loose. And now we should be able to just hop in here and get it out by hand. And the sensor will just fall off as soon as we knock that down. Oh, there we go. So that is the old sensor. It's probably a factory one, honestly. And here's our new sensor. We'll put it on the exact same way, just kind of like that. And then uh, put the hex nut on top. It's 11 and she's wrapped up. Unlike Eric's sensor, I actually checked this one. It's been torqued to eight newton meters and we know that it is good to go. So we can pull this thing back up. Pop this guy back on the bead and uh, we're ready to rock and roll. This one's working properly. We got 46.8 from the front tire and it says done. So we'll run around the truck here and trigger this one. 38.5, but it's working. Another one. 39.7. And the last one. Thirty-eight point seven, good deal. So it is done. TPMS has been relearned, and we can do an ID read. And it should tell us every sensor that is in the system. So we give it a second, see if the hex codes come back. There we go. Hex IDs for all four sensors. The Titan is fixed, and it wasn't that hard, as I always suspected. GM, of course, loves to do TPMS right, and the Volt, of course, has one of the better TPMS displays, as you can see right there. Individual tire TPMS, and it shows you what corner of the car it's on, and it looks like I need to throw a little bit of air in one of those tires. So to show you guys a little bit more about TPMS setup, Josh has a new Prius. The black Prius is gone, the one we engine swapped earlier this year. He traded it for a third gen, that Prius, and $2,000. So that is a heck of an upgrade. As you can see, this thing's like brand new. We're gonna try to use it as an example of how to set up TPMS. So it's a little tricky. Uh, I quickly scanned the TPMS sensors before with this guy. It would not let me trigger the sensors when I was in the Toyota Prius mode, but it will let me trigger them when I'm in the Subaru mode, because of course it still has the Subaru sensors in there. They're both 315 megahertz and they're all Pacific sensors. Almost every TPMS sensor in the world is a Pacific sensor. So I don't see why they won't interchange. What I'm gonna to try to do is put the Prius in its TPMS relearn mode. Uh, we're gonna use the big OBD scanner to do that. And we're gonna take this, I'm gonna trigger them in the Subaru mode and hopefully we can make it recognize those sensors so we don't have to uh, dismount all the tires and swap the sensors over. That seems like a lot of work for no reason. The new Prius, yeah. it's, it's a completely different car. <laughs> <laughs> it's less sporty, but faster. I said the old one was like a Corolla and this one's like a Camry. Yeah. So that might be a laughable upgrade, but when you drive it, you'll see what I mean. This, yeah. this one's built to be driven. The old one was built for fuel mileage. Right, right. This one feels like a complete car, basically. Yep. And the old one kind of felt like a 10 cam that did good work. Trigger, it should read the sensor. There we go. 27.3 PSI. And now we're looking at the uh, Max Assist Elite and we have no data received from any of the transmitters. So let's go to ID registration here. And we have changed the transmitters. Press next to proceed. After pressing next, you will have five minutes to perform the operation below. Input each transmitter ID code, press next to input the next code. Continue until they are all done. And I don't know any of these codes, but we can scan them quickly, I think and make this happen. There we go, the Prius actually had to be on to get into this mode, and I have 300 seconds to get everything figured out here. So, let's go get ID codes. And now I have a hex ID. I don't know if that worked or if it failed. Oh, yep, it's working, I think. And now I'm gonna run around the car, scan every one of these, and input the hex IDs really fast. I hope this works. Now I've input all four wheels and tires. Those are the uh, hex IDs of each one. And I hit next. What do you, oh, there it goes, there it goes, okay. Josh just pulled all the pinstripes off that thing. ID registration completed. Maybe the car has TPMS again. Now we're doing a signal check, okay. And I think it will tell us, let's see, all signal check next. And yes, the engine is running, even though it's a Prius, so it's not running. Checking. Nope, it's angry, I think. Maybe we need to go drive it. So in conclusion, TPMS sensors are easy. If you buy the right tools and the right sensors, if you're using the Autel and you have the MX sensors, you're good to go. Those are universally programmable, dual frequency, and you can just tell it what car it needs to be on and it's done. Uh, if you buy a cheap aftermarket sensor, 
it might not work at all. So that's where we're at on Eric's truck and just disregard Josh's Prius. We're gonna swap the sensors on that one. <laughs> anyway, it's really not that big of a deal. As you can see, it was no problem to reprogram the Titan and it's usually no problem to program the GMs and that Prius, I don't know. Uh, I searched and searched on why that wouldn't work and I'm, I'm still nowhere on that one, but it's not that much of a mystery if you just buy the right sensors. So TV mess saves lives, kind of sucks to work on. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you get cool shirts like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Hopefully that debunked the mysteries. Uh, it sure cost me a whole day of working on that truck.